Welcome to part two of this comparison video between SOLIDWORKS and Creo Parametric, taking a look at sketching techniques and practices. Just to recap very quickly, in part one, we covered four different topics. First, the concept of sketch references, which exists in Creo, but not SOLIDWORKS. Second, some of the similarities and differences between geometry tools, like using polygon and slot tools in SOLIDWORKS versus the palette in Creo, how convert is called project in Creo, and arc slots, which exist in SOLIDWORKS but does not have a direct analog in Creo Parametric. Third, we talked about what are called relations in SOLIDWORKS, which are constraints in Creo Parametric. And lastly, we talked about how you can pattern in a sketch in SOLIDWORKS where that's typically done at the feature level in Creo Parametric. Now let's jump into part two where we will take a look at two more topics about sketching. Now we'll go into the fifth item which is probably the biggest difference between SOLIDWORKS and Creo Parametric. So here I am sketching. If you take a look at the geometric entities that I created, they are all in blue. And entities that are in blue are not fully defined in terms of dimensions and the different relations that you have for them. When everything is fully defined, then those entities will change color from blue to black. And one way that we can get those entities to change color is by starting to add our different dimensions. If I go to this drop down, here you can specify the type of dimension that you want to create manually. For example, vertical dimension, horizontal dimension. You can chain dimensions, ordinate dimensions. You can see the different choices in here. Or you could just go to the Smart Dimension tool. And with the Smart Dimension tool, you will pick different entities. And based on what you pick, it figures out the dimension that you want to use. If I pick that horizontal line and then left click, well, then I can specify the value I want for this. Let's change that to a value of 10. And since I patterned the entities, you saw how the other ones updated. Let's say I grab this line and move it out over here. And let's change this one to a value of 4. And that dimension changed. The spacing in the pattern still controls the separation of the entities. And now let's get some locating dimensions. So for example, I can left click here and then left click this line and I'm getting a distance dimension. One thing I want to point out is that I was just left clicking. Let's change this to a value of four. And as I did that, a couple of the entities are now black because they are uh, defined for their dimensions. And let's see another one. Hey, let's dimension from here to there and then create this and we'll locate it at a value of eight and that's good and more entities turn black and as a person who comes from creo parametric this is a little weird for me because i'm used to having a predefined set of dimensions provided to me so i can figure out oh, okay i'm missing this dimension missing that dimension well at this point i could say okay let's dimension from here maybe to here and then create a dimension and that has a value of Four, I'll hit the enter key and now more entities turned black and for me it's just like you know okay well you know isn't that separation really defined by the pattern but anyhow if I select that and that and then left click over here hey let's change this to a value of 12 again more entities are turning black but I'm not sure what other different dimensions I need to add in here if I hit the escape key one way that you can get everything finalized is that you do have the ability if you choose to go to the drop down. Here we have the option to fully define the sketch. And for all entities in the sketch, I can hit the calculate button and bam, there you see a whole lot of different constraints in here. And I can hit the check mark and that way everything is in black so that it is fully defined. The sixth and final difference that I want to show is changing some of the different properties of the dimension. So for example, here we have this 10 dimension. If I right click on it, well, I get the different menus that I can execute commands for, but we also get the dimension command manager, I believe it is called. And it's got three different tabs in here. 
and I can do things like I can change the tolerance. So for example, maybe I want this to be a basic dimension so it gets a box around it. Let's say I want to change the number of decimal places. I can do that from here as well. If we want to add in other additional symbols or text, we can do this in this field. There is a tab for making modifications to the leaders. If I go to the others tab, you could override the units if you wanted to report them in a different quantity than the rest. And hey, here's a read only option, a driven option uh, in there. But you have this dimension properties tab, whereas in Creole Parametric, this is something that you pretty much only access when you are in part or assembly mode. You typically don't do this in dimension mode. But anyhow, I have my sketch completed. If I want to, I could click on the exit sketch. And that way I have this particular sketch in the model. And while it's still selected, I could say, let's extrude a cut and we could drag, oops. There we go. Drag it out some distance that I want and then hit the check mark. And that way we have used that sketch for a feature. All right, let's jump over to Creole and real quickly just touch on some of these different things. All right, let's jump into the sketching environment in Creole Parametric. I'm going to select a flat planar surface, then click on the sketch tool, and let me change to looking flat at the sketch plane. So here are those sketch reference that I had mentioned. So automatically Creole Parametric is going to suggest some references to you. In the past few versions of Creole Parametric, especially since Creole 4.0, they've been getting away from setting up your references in advance. If you use Pro Engineer or Wildfire or some of the earlier versions of Creole, you are much more likely to set up your references right at the beginning. So for example, I could say, hey, instead of dimension from that side, maybe I want to dimension from this side over here in order to use a different sketch reference. But again, they're getting away from that, so you can pretty much just dimension to anything that you want in the model. Now, regarding the different geometry tools, well, I had mentioned the palette. If I go to the palette over here, we have the polygons tab where, if I make this a little bit longer, I should be able to show you that. You can pick the type of polygon that you want and then drop it in the sketch and configure the size. Similarly, if I go to the shapes tab you could use racetrack which is definitely just like the slot but this is the concept of a palette versus using the predefined shapes that you have in the ribbon in solidworks also we had taken a look at the convert command in solidworks instead we have project and if i just want to grab the surface i can change to the loop option and that way i've got all the different entities from that particular surface let me hit the undo button just so that i don't have any entities there instead. Let's see, for the next thing that we will take a look at, let me go back to my sketch orientation. So let's say that I create a parallelogram over here. Well, there you see that we have a bunch of different suggested dimensions to us. Let me change to a no hidden line mode just so that you can see the dimensions against a white background. So these are the different dimensions that are suggested to us automatically. I'm going to turn off the display of dimensions for a moment. You can see that we have these different parallel constraints that are in the model. There's no concept in Creo of a separate relations manager where you would see these all in a list. Similarly, if I wanted to define some other additional constraints, you could either select the constraint first and then pick the entity that you want to apply it to, or alternatively, if you select an entity, then from the pop-up menu, you can pick the different constraints directly from the menu and get to them quickly and easily. Dimension display back on. Regarding patterning, like I mentioned, patterning is typically something that you don't do inside of the sketch. It's something that you would do after you get out of sketch mode and create a feature. It's recommended that you duplicate features as opposed to duplicating entities in the sketch. The next thing to look take a look at, again, is the concept of the different dimensions. So Creole Parametric is automatically going to suggest to you the minimum dimensioning scheme in order to 
configure the size of the different entities. And if you like one of these dimensions, hey, you can double click on it and change the value. Maybe I want that to be a value of 25. You can also manually create dimensions. So for example, if I want the length of that line, I will pick it with the left mouse button and then locate with the middle mouse button and then change the value of the dimension to what I want. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. And if I want a different dimension than what is suggested to me, hey, I can just hit the dimension icon and again, pick what I want to dimension with the left mouse button and then middle mouse button and say change that to a value of 50. You will notice that it automatically put in a sketch reference for me so that you can dimension to any entities that you weren't initially dimensioning to if you want to. All right, so let me see. Let me grab some of these different dimensions and just move them a little more conveniently. And we have one weak dimension that's left. Those dimensions that Creo Parametric automatically provides to you are known as weak dimensions. And if you are happy with one of the suggestions, you can also just click on it and use the different icons if you want to lock the dimension so that it can no longer be changed. We also have the ability to make it strong, which will again open up a dialog box that allow you to punch in a different value in order to get what you want. And if I click on one of these different dimensions, we have the different options for changing it. But really the way that you would get to the dimension properties is in part mode in this case. Let me hit the check mark. So we have our sketch created. Let me go back to a shaded with edges mode. Let me select this feature and extrude it. I'm going to flip it. When it goes into the model, I have a configuration option that automatically toggles this to being a cut, uh, but I could generate it, say, as a surface instead, or even a solid inside a solid if I wanted to, and even make that as a separate body. But hey, let's just do this as a cut. And then with the feature still selected, if I go to modify dimensions and then pick on a dimension, Here's the dimension properties dialog box. Right now, the tolerances are grayed out. You'd have to make sure that you have your tolerances active uh, if you want to be able to modify those. So let me again go back to this extrude, edit the dimensions, pick the dimension over here. And that way I could say, hey, this is a basic dimension. Or I could say instead that a dimension like this one if I wanted it to have tolerances, I could choose the tolerance mode that I want to use and change the different values and make changes to all sorts of different things regarding the dimension property. So again, this is something that you typically do in part mode as opposed to doing it in sketch mode as well inside of SolidWorks. Uh, so there you have it, just six different things that we compared and contrasted in sketching in SOLIDWORKS versus Creo Parametric, the concept of sketch references in Creo, some of the geometry tools are slightly different. In SOLIDWORKS, you have things called relations, which are constraints in Creo. You can and often do pattern in the sketch in SOLIDWORKS, but that's not really done inside of Creo Parametric. Also, Creo provides a dimensioning scheme to you, whereas SOLIDWORKS uses the changing of entity colors to indicate when something is fully defined and also accessing your dimension properties. Typically, that's done in part mode in Creo Parametric, whereas you can do that in sketch mode as well in SOLIDWORKS. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something in this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.